When you're doing world problems with um, right triangles, you're going to hear two terms, angles of elevation and angles of depression. Angles of elevation and depression are going to form right triangles, which are going to cause us to use either trigonometry, special right, or Pythagorean theorem to solve. The two special angles that occur, the angle between the horizontal, so here's the horizontal, and the line of sight to a point on the ground or below the observer is called the angle of depression. Then you have the angle between the horizontal, so here's a horizontal, and the line of sight to a point above the observer, so here's the observer's line of sight, is called the angle of elevation. So when you're given a word problem that has angle of depression, automatically draw a horizontal and then an angle pointing down, this will be your angle of depression. Or you can draw it this way. Oops, I just did the same thing. So this is the angle of depression. And as soon as you see the word, or the phrase angle of elevation, automatically start from the bottom, and then looking up is your angle of elevation. So this would be your angle of elevation. Okay, so for the first example, we have a lighthouse 55 meters above sea level spots a distress signal from a sailboat. The angle of depression, so we should stop there and automatically draw a horizontal with an angle in the downward direction. This angle of depression to the sailboat is 21 degrees. Okay, continuing on, it says a lighthouse 55 meters above sea level. Well, I'm not entirely sure where to put that yet, so I'm going to keep reading. It, says it spots a distress signal from a sailboat. We have the angle of depression is 21, so we know it's definitely that. How far away? Oh, it says the angle of depression to the sailboat. So, the angle of depression to the sailboat means the line of sight to the sailboat. So that means this is the sailboat right here. So that must be mean the lighthouse is here if you're spotting a sailboat down here. So if the lighthouse is 55 meters above sea level, then that means it's 55 meters here. Or it would be the same as if we put 55 meters here. And angle of elevation and depression, that's a clue that we're going to have a right triangle. So, the picture that we have is we have an angle, a side opposite that angle. So this is the picture we want to represent the problem that we're dealing with. Now, what we're looking for is how far away is the sailboat, so remember sailboat's down here, from the base of the lighthouse. Well, the lighthouse, the whole lighthouse is here. So this is the base of the lighthouse. So we're looking for this distance here, which is going to be the same as this distance here because we have parallel lines. So let me clean this picture up a little bit. So we're looking for this distance, x, and we're using this as our reference angle. So in relationship to 21 degrees, x is adjacent and 55 is opposite. So we have an angle and a side, and the angle is in a 30, 60, or 45 angle, so we're using trig. The trig function that has an O and an A in it is tangent, and that says tangent of your angle is equal to the opposite side, 55, over the adjacent side, which we're going to call x. We're going to plug in our angle, which is 21, so we have tangent of 21 equals 55 over x. Figure out what the tangent of 21 is. So I have tan 21, make sure you're in degree mode, which is 0.3839, and that equals 55 over x. 
Okay, I'm going to come over here. 0.3839 equals 55 over x. I'm going to put the 3, 0.3839 on top of a 1 and cross multiply. 55 times 1 is 55, and that equals 0.3839 times x. So I divide both sides by 0.3839. So 55 divided by 0.3839 equals 143.3. On the next exercise, all we're going to do is identify whether what is given is an angle of elevation or an angle of depression. So we're just working our vocabulary. The angle of elevation for A to E. So we're going to start at A. What is the angle of elevation to E? Remember the angle of elevation is basically the line of sight. So the angle of elevation for A to E would be angle 1. Because remember here's your horizontal, here's your angle of elevation. The angle of depression from D to B. Remember, you always have an horizontal to a line of sight. This angle is your angle of depression, angle 8. Okay, so now I'd like for you to pause the video and see if you can get number 3 and number 4. So the angle of elevation from B to F angle of elevation, you start with the horizontal looking up. So angle 2. The angle of depression from E to C, remember you start with the horizontal looking down, is angle 9. Okay, so the rest of the um, video is just going to be working through examples using elevation and depression and other types of mixed word problems. So a man on a cliff at the edge of the ocean spots a raft. The cliff is 50 feet above sea level and the angle of depression is 17 degrees. So this right here is where you stop and draw what you know the angle of depression looks like. So the angle of depression, we start with the horizontal looking in the downward direction. So this angle right here is our angle of depression, which they told us is 17 degrees. We want to find the distance from the raft to the cliff to the nearest foot. So let's go back here. A man on a cliff at the edge of the ocean spots a raft. So a man on a cliff at the edge of the ocean, he spotted a raft. So if he's on a cliff, he's probably up here, and he looks down, and he sees the raft. The cliff is 50 feet above sea level, so we have a height here of 50 feet, which means we also have a height here of 50 feet, forming our right triangle. Then we have, we want the distance from the raft, here's the raft, to the cliff. So we want from here to the cliff, which will be the same as the distance from here to here. So let's clean up our picture a little bit and look at our right triangle. So we have 17 degrees is our angle, and 50 feet is the side opposite that angle and x is the side adjacent to the angle that we're looking for. So we have an angle and a given side looking for the second side is SOHCAHTOA, our trig features, functions. So we want the one that has an O and an A in it, which is tangent, and that says the tangent of your angle is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. So we just fill in what we just set up. The tangent of the angle, the angle is 17, that equals the opposite side. The opposite side is 50 over the adjacent side, which we're calling x. Let's figure out what the value of tangent of 17 is. Tangent of 17 is equal to 0 0.3057. So 0 0.3057 equals our 50 over x. We're going to put this 0.3057 over 1 and cross multiply. So 50 times 1 is 50 and that equals 0.3057x. And now we're going to divide both sides by 0 0.3057 to get x by itself. 
So 50 divided by 0 0.3057 gives me 163 to the nearest foot, so actually 164 feet. Okay, I'd like for you to pause the video and try number two on your own. Just do the picture. Don't worry about solving it right now. Just try drawing the picture and see if it matches mine. Okay, so your right triangle is going to look like this. 11 degrees is adjacent to the 50 and, and the X is opposite the 11 degrees. So now we're going to use some trigonometry to solve for the value of X, which represents the height of the platform. So here's my platform right here. So we have, in reference to this angle, the opposite side looking, and we're given, in reference to this angle, the adjacent side. So the function that has an O and an A in it is tangent again. And that says the tangent of an angle is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. Filling in our angle measure, we have tangent of 11 equals the opposite, which is x, over the adjacent, which is 50. Now we're going to figure out what the tangent of 11 is. We have 0.1944, which equals x over 50. We're going to put 0.1944 over 1 so that we can cross multiply. x times 1 is x, and 50 times 0.1944 is 9.72. So x is equal to 9.72. Okay, number three, this one does not have an angle of elevation or depression. So I just want you to pause the video and see if you get what I get. Okay, so for number three, your picture should look like this, where we have an isosceles triangle with the base angles of 55, and then the altitude. Remember, an altitude in an isosceles triangle bisects the opposite side, so this is 20 and this is 20, since the base was 40. And the altitude is the perpendicular, so that's x. We would use trig to find the altitude, and we would get 28.6. Okay, moving on to number four. Pause the video and draw a picture and then solve it and see if you get what I get. Okay, your picture should look like this. The wire is clearly attached this way as the hypotenuse. And it's saying that the height of the tower was 150 meters. So that has to be the perpendicular, the, the side that forms the perpendicular. Now this is given in relationship to this angle the opposite side and this is the hypotenuse. So you're using the sine function. And you get the sine of x is equal to the opposite 150 over the hypotenuse 190. So remember, when you're looking for the angle, you use the trig function that looks like it has a degree symbol next to it, even though our degree symbol in this case is a negative 1. So all you do is type in sine inverse, or second sine, and then 150 divided by 190. And you should get 52 degrees. Why didn't we do 52.1? Because here it says the nearest degree. That means the whole number, nearest whole number. All right, try number five, pause the video, see if your picture and answer match mine. Okay, so we said the top of the tower. Well, clearly the tower will be this high, 60 feet. And the angle depression, remember with angle depression, we automatically draw horizontal, looking down is 35 degrees. Find the distance from the object to the base of the tower. Well, really that distance is here to here. But the angle of depression will be, well, this side will be parallel to the ground, because the ground is horizontal and this is a horizontal. So because we're looking for this length, it'll be the same as this length, too. And then we're going to use the tangent function again, opposite and adjacent, to solve for the missing side. All right, last example. Pause and see if you get what I get. Okay, and finally we have a ladder leaning up against the building. So this is the ladder, making an angle of 49 degrees with the ground. Well, it has to be this angle, because this one has to be perpendicular with the building to the ground and reaches a point on the building. So here's where it reaches the point on the building, 12 meters above the ground. 